I'm Helen Chersky and I'm a physicist at University College London. Um, my superhero is me diving into a sea of equations because I have great enthusiasm for all these things and I'm at sea when I, I study bubbles and the physics of bubbles in the ocean and how they help the ocean breathe and I this is what my job feels like is that when I approach a new topic or a new part of my subject there's all this science to dive into but also I, I work at sea I go to sea I work from ships and it's a very physical thing there's this idea that scientific knowledge now sort of come it, it emerges it just arrives you know you google it and there are numbers and actually someone had to collect it someone had to work it out and and so me diving in is, is, is that process of how you find knowledge. You just, you get immersed in it, immersed in the situation and you explore. So I picked out two. Uh, now this, this is the first one. And this one, this is basically my job in an equation. And this equation, it says something very simple. The ocean is breathing. There are gases coming and going across its surface. So oxygen and nitrogen are generally going down. Carbon dioxide goes up or goes down. So the oceans act a bit like a pair of lungs. They're helping gases come and go between the ocean and the atmosphere. And the amount of gas that comes and goes is this on this side here. And then this is how we describe um, all the gas that comes and goes. And it depends on breaking waves and bubbles and how many storms there are and whether the swell at sea, all these processes that mess up the ocean surface and help gases come and go. So that's all in this bit, actually, just in that one little letter there. It's all hidden away in, the, in one very innocent looking letter. Um, but this, if we want to understand how the ocean breathes, this equation is, is how to do it. How much carbon dioxide is going down into the ocean that is contained within this equation so this is an important one and then this equation is um, one of most physicists favorite equations it's one of my favorite equations because it is very elegant and this is uh, what a physicist would call the 2d wave equation and what that means is if you have a surface like the surface of the ocean and you have waves traveling across it and they could travel that way or they could travel that way this is the equation that encapsulates everything about how a wave travels. A wave must always be traveling. That's the nature, it's moving energy. And this equation describes how the speed of the wave, which is down here, is related to how the shape of the wave changes in time and in space. So it's a very compact formulation, but it, it brings with it a very big idea, which is that energy moves in waves and all waves, all two dimensional waves will follow this equation. There's only one way of having a wave, and it's a thing that does this. And it might happen in one dimension, or two dimensions, or three dimensions, or, or even more if you're a, someone who deals in higher dimensions, but it's fundamentally the same thing, and, and this is what it is. I never really thought about the opportunities I'd had in a way, because you don't, but I do remember the night before I got my final fourth year results uh, as an undergraduate. So that was the, my degree result. And I remember sitting on the stairs in the student house I was living in, and it really occurring to me for the first time that completing a physics degree was something that I was the first female in my family to have had the opportunity to do that. You know, my mother um, had started a degree at a time when things were very different and she did some maths and physics but she never really did as much of it as she could have done and her mother didn't have the opportunity to do any technical studies and you know there are all these women who are bright and capable and intelligent and and this thing having finished a degree in physics it was it was weird to be the first one to think this is a privilege that so few of them have had and yet many men have had that privilege right many people in, in one half of society might, I mean, there's, there's lots of people that go to university for the first time and the first, they're the first one in their families and that's really important. But even 20 years ago, if you told someone this is a person with a degree, they would expect that they would be male. And that's changing. And what the thing I notice is that um, I used to, you know, you go to events, social events, and you'd say, people would say, what do you do? And I would say, I'm a physicist. And they'd say, I hated physics at school. And it was the first reaction. It was like automatic 
programmed in. I hated physics at school. That was the first thing they thought when hearing that word. And now, now what people say is, ah, my kid really likes physics, or my neighbor's child really likes physics, or my neighbor's child really likes science. And so it, they're not admitting uh, usually about whether they've got a relationship with science, but the next generation think it's okay. And so that, I think that's progress.